neuron as structural and functional unit of neural system. Generation and conduction of nerve impulse. Neurons are excitable cells because their membranes are in a polarized state. Different types of ion channels are present on the neural membrane. These ion channels are selectively permeable to different ions. When a neuron is not conducting any impulse, the axonal membrane is comparatively more permeable to K plus potassium ions and nearly impermeable to Na plus sodium ions. Similarly, the membrane is impermeable to negatively charged proteins present in the axoplasm. Consequently, the axoplasm inside the axon contains high concentration of K plus and negatively charged proteins and low concentration of Na plus. In contrast, the fluid outside the axon contains low concentration of K plus a high concentration of Na plus and thus forms a concentration gradient. These ionic gradients across the resting membrane are maintained by the active transport of ions by the NaK pump which transport 3 Na plus outwards for 2 K plus into the cell. As a result the outer surface of the axonal membrane possesses a positive charge while its inner surface becomes negatively charged and therefore is polarized. The electrical potential difference across the resting plasma membrane is called as resting potential. When a stimulus is applied at a site on the polarized membrane the membrane at the site A becomes freely permeable to Na+. Plus. This leads to rapid influx of Na+, plus, followed by the reversal of the polarity at that site. That is, the outer surface of the membrane becomes negatively charged and the inner side becomes positively charged. The polarity of the membrane at the site A is thus reversed and hence depolarized. The electric potential difference across the plasma membrane at the site A is called the action potential which is in fact termed as nerve impulse. At sites immediately ahead the axon membrane has a positive charge on the outer surface and negative charge in its inner surface. As a result, a current flow on the inner surface from site A to site B. On the outer surface, current flows from site B to site A. To complete the circuit of current flow, hence the polarity at the site is reversed and an action potential is generated at site B. Thus, the impulse generated at site A arrives at site B. The sequence is repeated along the length of the axon and consequently the impulse is conducted. The rise in the stimulus induces permeability to Na plus is extremely short-lived. It is quickly followed by a rise in permeability to K plus within a fraction of a second. K plus diffuses outside the membrane and restores the resting potential of the membrane at the site of excitation and the fiber becomes once more responsive to further stimulation. Transmission of impulses. A nerve impulse is transmitted from one neuron to another through junctions called synapse. A synapse is formed by the membranes 
of a presynaptic neuron and a postsynaptic neuron which may or may not be separated by a gap called synaptic cleft. There are two types of synapses electrical synapse and chemical synapse. At electric synapse, the membranes of pre and postsynaptic neurons are in very close proximity. Electric current can flow directly from one neuron into the other across these synapses. Transmission of an impulse across electrical synapses is similar to impulse conduction along a single axon. Impulse transmission across an electrical synapse is always faster than that across a chemical synapse. Electrical synapses are rare in our system. At chemical synapse, the membranes of pre- and postsynaptic neurons are separated by a fluid-filled space called synaptic cleft. Chemicals called neurotransmitter are involved in the transmission of impulses at these synapses. The axon terminals contain vesicles filled with these neurotransmitters. When an impulse arrives at the axon terminal, it stimulates the movement of the synaptic vesicles towards the membrane, where they fuse with the plasma membrane and release their neurotransmitters in the synaptic cleft. The released neurotransmitters bind to the specific receptors present on the postsynaptic membrane. This binding opens iron channels allowing an entry of ions which can generate a new potential in the postsynaptic neuron. The new potential developed may be either excitatory or inhibitory. Brain is divided into forebrain, midbrain and hindbrain. Forebrain is again divided into olfactory lobes, cerebrum and diencephalon. Hindbrain is divided into pons, cerebellum and medulla oblongata.